in the in all minors. Um, that was oh, sorry, kind of, it's and, 10, uh, interesting sorry. fact. Sorry? sorry, sorry, it's 10.15, we have to start on time. So uh, let's start the afternoon session. And the uh, first speaker is Alfredo Guevara from PI, and he will talk about uh, generalized locality in CEGM amplitudes. Please, Alfredo. Hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, so hopefully I will get by the end of time. So let me thank the organizers for this uh, wonderful online conference. I'm very pleased that my first amplitude of speaking have been, has been online. And uh, this is, uh, uh, we, have, we have seen in the morning some very beautiful talks about different connections uh, between cluster polytopes, the symbol alphabet in N equals four, the hypersimplex, uh, the, uh, the tree level or on the loop level and pseudohedron, and uh, also the, the talk by, uh, by uh, Freddy. So uh, this would be some kind of uh, providing the same, the same perspective uh, as, as Freddy, extending uh, his perspective. And it will be um, mostly based on this work, uh, our first paper uh, back on March uh, last year. Uh, some work that I did with, with Diego uh, Garcia Sepulveda, who, who was a master's student at PI, uh, with Bruno, who's a grad student, and Jung Chang, uh, who's a grad student there in the, in the audience. So let me just uh, very briefly uh, give you uh, some some recap of what uh, Freddy uh, has told you. Hopefully, he has convinced you that uh, this uh, new amplitude CEGM amplitudes they generalize a fascinating connection that we all know and love between uh, moduli spaces, say the, the Riemann uh, sphere, on uh, the worksheet perspective, and kinematic spaces. And we introduced them back uh, in March last year in two different flavors. So the first flavor is uh, the CHY integral is a CHY representation, uh, which is integrating over uh, some uh, complex projective space of k minus one uh, dimensions. So I'm not going to go much into either of this uh, formula. Uh, you you have heard some some uh, something about it already in Song's talk, uh, but let me just mention that we can use it very powerfully to 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 derive some analytic results that are very hard to see from 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 the other perspective. So the other perspective is a more geometrical perspective, and it's based on the, the, the simplicial fan uh, derived by, by Speyer and Williams, which is a positive uh, tropical Grassmannian or the tropical Grassmannian. And the way we compute the amplitude in this perspective is we just consider uh, maximal cones or facets of this, of, of this uh, object consistent with some canonical orderings. So this is gonna be a very important word, the, uh, the ordering uh, word. Uh, in particular, I'm going to be focusing, of course, on the positive part. That, in the CHY perspective, means that I'm going to take this part Taylor, uh, or generalized part Taylor integrals. Now, uh, the other uh, background I need to, to, to emphasize here is that uh, we know that for k equals 3, a tropical Grassmannian can be parameterized in terms of uh, our collections of uh, metric trees or collections of uh, Feynman graphs. This was introduced in this beautiful paper by Hermann Jensen, just began Stormfields, how to draw a tropical, tropical plane. And uh, its connection with, with, with the CEGM amplitudes was emphasized by, by Borges and Cachasso. So this is a simple example of the bipyramid, the, the first, uh, the most simple, uh, non-simplicial example actually, uh, that happens at, at six points. So you know that the bipyramid, we can parameterize it in terms of these collections. We label the internal distances by positive numbers, they might be related because of some compatibility conditions. But the important point is that they are the generations. So the, the generations appear whenever one of these internal distances shrink to, to zero. And in that case, uh, we, 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 we can get this hyperplane. So I have six hyperplanes here, and they label the, boundary, the boundaries of this, of this uh, by pyramid. So I just draw this by pyramid in some some projective explain uh, some projective plane. I just project with some uh, inhomogeneous plane, and I can draw it in three dimensions. Okay, so I have six boundaries for this bipyramid. pyramid. So the way I compute the amplitude uh, or the contribution to the amplitude from this bipyramid, pyramid, uh, uh, so Borges and Cachasso they use uh, Laplace transform formula, so inspired by Schrödinger parameters. Uh, but you can also show that uh, this Laplace transform is nothing but just the volume of the back pyramid, and in particular, because there is some projection in terms of uh, kinematic variables, so you have this generalized momentum um, conservation uh, equations, 
So I'm sorry. Can, can you see uh, this part of the of the slide? I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, yeah, it's kind of near the button, so it's cut. By yes. Uh, oh, okay. So how do I actually? Yeah, that's that's very. I I don't think I'm gonna mess up, but let me try to. Yeah, maybe I can do it this way. Is it better? Yes, we can see it now, but the other slides were fine. So. Okay, yeah, at some point I go, I'm going to go to the to the real bottom, so I want to... Uh, you can go to the presentation mode, right? Yeah, what's the presentation mode? Go to, I don't know, go to ver. Oh, yes, that's in Spanish, yes. And then oh. choose uh, that one, yes. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's what I did. No, 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 choose the other one, the previous one. Oh, okay. Modo lectura. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. Yeah, now it's perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, so I was telling you that you can uh, do this Laplace transform, or it's also equivalent to computing just the volume or some uh, projection of the light pyramid. The important points that we're going to get this pause. I'm going to explain what they are in a, in a second. But they are just combinations of of this uh, generalized kinematic invariance that Freddy introduced. Okay, so the outline of the talk, uh, so just some, some buzzwords here. So the first part is going to be about some bootstrap technique that we're going to use to get the amplitude using just combinatorics. The second part is going to be about the analytic structure of the amplitude. So we're going we're to look at poles. And the third part, we're going to explore some new, uh, new factorizations that appear uh, uh, once we define the soft and the hard deformations of the amplitude. So the first part is about the bootstrap. And in particular, we're going to focus on higher k frame and diagrams. Uh, the motivation for this, of course, besides the CEGM amplitude, is a very, very fascinating connection with uh, n equals four symbology and cluster, cluster algebras and cluster polytopes, including cluster adjacency that um, has appeared in this uh, series of, of, of beautiful, beautiful papers uh, starting last December. So k equals four is going to be an important, an important uh, case. And I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on, on that besides k equals three. So just to start with a simple example, what we call the first combinatorial bootstrap is just uh, a way of getting the 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 full collections starting from k equals two collections. So just planar three uh, Feynman diagrams. We prune these Feynman diagrams. So for instance, I do six particles. I start pruning each leaf. I generate six diagrams without a label. And then once I have this collection, this is a seed. Now I can start mutating, doing just planar mutations in each of the components. And what I'm going to get is the full, uh, the full set of uh, compatible collections. Now I can do it, for instance, uh, starting uh, for, for, for five particles. Of course, I can do two mutations uh, at five particles. At six particles, I, I, ha I have four, uh, sorry, 46 diagrams with four mutations and two diagrams with six mutations. So these are the numbers of the generations that I can make. Um, and I can cover, as I said, the full, the full uh, possible uh, space of tropical, uh, sorry, the, the full possible, um, all the possible collections using this mutation rule. Uh, in particular, just to, 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 to tell you our benchmark is for, for, for 3,9, sorry, uh, or 3,9, yes. So we can use uh, four kernels and just mutating our seeds. So Catalan uh, nine minus two seeds. Uh, you can construct all the three, three, 300,000 collections in, in 10 or 15 minutes. So this is for, for k equals three. Let's see what happens for k, k equals four. So for k equals four, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the notion of collection or, or vector to a notion of array. Uh, this array is a symmetric matrix. Um, sorry, for now let's say it's just a, a matrix or an array of uh, Feynman, Feynman diagrams. Uh, so in the diagonals there is nothing and Whenever the, the, the so we, in entry A, B, we just put a Feynman diagram without labels A and B. So the, the key object here and the, the most important object is D, which, which is this distance. So this distance, uh, A, B, C, D, is the distance between labels C and D. So we, we, we put a metric in each of these diagrams and we compute the distance between C and D uh, for the diagram in the slot A, B. So this is the this is a key uh, object here, and if we impose this to be symmetric, in the upper indices we find very easily that uh, the matrix of Feynman diagrams is a symmetric matrix. 
But we want more. We want to impose uh, something similar to k equals three, which, which is what Fred showed you. We want to impose completely, completely symmetric uh, distances. So this tensor is going to be symmetric in uh, all four labels, and this is going to be uh, strongly constraining our possibilities. So the first two conditions, in fact, or they already give you a strong constraint. If you just look at the first two conditions, they will tell you that each column of this matrix happens to be a collection. So it happens to be uh, a parameterization of a facet of, of k equals three. So that means that we can write uh, all these possible arrays as uh, sets of columns. So where, it, where each column is nothing but a facet for a, 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 a maximal cone of k equals three. So for instance, we can do it uh, for n equals seven and k equals four. We know what are the facets of 3, 6. These are just these 48 uh, facets that we know. And we just put all possible 48 facets here. And then we find, it, once we impose this array to be symmetric, we find that there are 90, 91,000 such arrays. So this is purely combinatorics. So this is what we call for now the, the second combinatorial booster. But after that, we have some compatibility equations. So we, we look at these compatibility equations and we, set, we, we ask how many of these symmetric arrays admit a metric with this condition. And we find that 888 of them do not admit a metric, their, their metric is degenerate. So these are some higher co-dimension objects. But uh, the remaining ones, which I didn't write here, happen to be actually healthy. And this, this non-healthy 888 that do not admit a metric uh, it's an interesting number. It has been found in a recent recent paper uh, to be a non-regular, the number of non-regular triangulations of the amplitude hedron m equals two for eight particles. So uh, this is, this deserves further further explanation. But the wood ones, the ones that admit a metric, they are nine ninety thousand six oh eight, and uh, we can compute their metric very easily. We can compute the volumes of these of these collections of these facets, and using software like Polymake, this takes about two minutes and gives us the, 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 the fully complete uh, amplitude uh, uh, k equals four n equals eight. So uh, this is uh, already a, a, a very simple procedure. It, it, it just has two parts and it already matches some, some, some uh, computations uh, previously done. Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's previously, previously done, but some uh, simultaneous computation using the HVHY uh, framework, which, which you, which you saw in some stuff. Great, so um, in general, this is very easy, very easy to do for any k. So we just write any uh, rank k minus two symmetric tensor for, 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 for any k as uh, a set of columns, which are rank k minus three symmetric tensors. Uh, and then we impose some compatibility. So that's it. And this, this form of writing a facet of uh, tropical Tasmanian kn can be related to a boundary map uh, that has appeared for, for matrix subdivisions. Uh, so one reference for this, I'm, I'm sure it's not the only one, uh, but the one I know is, is the one by early in uh, last year. So uh, the notion of hard limits, which is uh, what I'm gonna talk in, in some, some next slides, is very closely related to this decomposition of the facets of Kn in terms of facets of K minus one, N minus one. And this is going to be uh, an important an important point later. So first, um, in order to make this notion of hard limits uh, more 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 transparent, I'm going to introduce uh, the vertices in terms of collections. So I'm going to derive I'm going to show you how how to uh, easily derive some some known results that have appeared in the in the mathematical uh, literature um, in the context of the uh, positive subdivisions of the hypersimplex. And uh, what I want to emphasize here is that this is all self-contained in terms of, of uh, generalized Feynman diagrams. So we can, we can very easily see um, how, to, how to deal with, uh, with vertices, edges, and facets, and so on. So to start with, we start with a full collection. Uh, again, our favorite example is the Y pyramid. We just degenerate. Uh, so we go to phase uh, one and phase two. That means that we are all, all, we're along this edge that connects uh, this vertex R, R and T. And uh, we, we, we see that the, some, some of these diagrams, they just shrink. So they, they become degenerate, right? So they are not cubic anymore. They're still planar, but not cubic. And we apply some further degenerations. That means that we, we sit now on two different vertices. 
and a single parameter is, is left. So this parameter um, is nothing but some projective coordinates. So if we, if we write the metric, the, the distances associated to each of these diagrams, uh, and we mod out by some, by some tropical uh, hyperplane chips, uh, which are not, not very relevant, we find that this, uh, these distances, they are nothing but rays uh, because these parameters are, are positive. And uh, of course, we can project them to, to, to recover our, 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 our favorite um, pictures. But so far, we have the important point is that we have a single parameter collection of degenerate uh, Feynman diagrams, which are not cubic. Now, these uh, single parameter collections, these are the vertices, as, as, as I just showed you. And from the volume formula, so we can compute the volume of, of this object, we know that these vertices are going to happen to be, they, are, they, are, they happen to be poles of our amplitude. So um, we, in order to get the actual poles of our amplitude, we have project with some kinematics, our, uh, our uh, distance tensor, and uh, modding out by this, by, by this projected coordinate, we get some combinations, some specific combinations of, of kinematic invariance, or these are the poles. So this is a way, uh, if, we, if we knew all these possible collections, we would know all the possible poles of the amplitude, and I'm gonna show you that this is actually enough to, to get uh, the, full, the full amplitude. Um, so the, uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the tricks that we're gonna do is to notice that each of these diagrams, we can write it uh, so of course, k equals two diagrams. Uh, they are a single propagator. They have a single propagator or, or none. So I, I just identify them with k equals two Mandelstam invariants instead of k equals three generalized Mandelstam. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see that whenever I get compatible uh, Mandelstam invariants, so you see, for instance, that three, four, and five, six, they are compatible uh, in this pole with, uh, in this and this pole. So if they are compatible, that means that I'm going to be able to add them as k equals two uh, Mandelstam invariants. So the, the way I add the metrics, like the way I add the distances is just by blowing up uh, my, my, degenerate, my, my, my degenerate vertex. So I put a zero distance edge in this, in this diagram and I put a zero distance edge in these diagrams and then they, the diagrams have the same topology, therefore they can be added. And, and the addition just happens to be a two parameter uh, Feynman diagram and I do it for all the components and I get some, 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 just yeah, some combination, two parameter combination of, of, of my, of my Mandelstam's. So the distances, they also add as, as vectors in this big uh, space and the poles also add in some, in some combination. So this, this construction already tell, tell you something that is very general for, for any K, which is the fact that two one parameter arrays. So let, let's say, let's call these poles for now. So two such poles, uh, which I can write, of course, as collections or as generalized arrays, they are compatible only when, they, when their components, uh, when, the, when their individual components, which are 1K lower, are compatible. So for, for, for K equals four, these are gonna be K equals three collections. And I'm just gonna look at the compatibility of these K equals three collections, which is very easy because I, I know them all. And the second fact is that if, if a set of such arrays uh, is pairwise compatible, meaning each pair of this is compatible, uh, then they are all simultaneously compatible, meaning I can just add them. And the, the sum is, in the, is inside the, the tropical, is, in, is, is a generalized Feynman diagram. So it's basically inside the tropical, uh, the positive tropical zone. So this is trivial for K equals two. So if, if I have some set, some set of poles which are compatible, I can always find a Feynman diagrams with all those poles. And then just using this, 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 this picture, it just follows for, for all K. So these two facts I'm gonna use, for instance, if I want to find all the, all the possible, uh, if I want to find the amplitude, right? If I want to find the amplitude for, for K equals four and equals eight, I have 360 vertices. These ones, let's, let's assume they are, they are given to me. So someone give, gives me the vertices, let's say for, from stringy canonical forms, as Song told you, or from cluster variable. Uh, and I just write them is in this form. It's actually very easy to see uh, how to write them in, in this form. So the components here are raised in uh, tropical Tasmanian uh, three seven. And I know what are the compatibilities between this race of tropical Tasmanian three seven. I know when, when they can be added. Now, using this, I, I just code it. I just put it in, in some, some software. Uh, and then what I do is to 
look at compatibilities uh, between uh, the, the, the big uh, vertex, vertices in 4.8. And it's very easy to construct the graph. It just takes two, two minutes or something. Just uh, coding first k equals three k's and then k equals four k's. So it's some kind of bootstrap. And finally, use find click uh, to find maximal set of compatible poles. So whenever I find a, a set of compatible poles which cannot be enlarged by an, another pole, I know that this is going to give me a facet because the the, the tropical gas mining happens to be a simplicial complex, at least combinatorically. So uh, this is uh, all I wanted to say about collections so far. And, and the last part is actually, uh, uh, I, I would say the funniest part. So it's about defining soft limits. So this is something that we, 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 we love a lot in, uh, in the standard quantum field theory. And now I'm gonna show you also how to define hard limits. So this is some work I did with Diego, who, is, uh, who was a master's student at FPI. Okay, so uh, soft and hard limits. Uh, let's, let's do just k equals three for now. Uh, using this uh, generalized Mandelstam invariance, we find a soft limit on particle one as uh, well. All the Mandelstam that have that uh, have a particle label one, they just go to zero, so that's soft. And the hard limit is all the particles, all, all the Mandelstams yeah, that have particle one, they just go to infinity, so they they become hard with respect to the others. So the important point is that these two limits they are related by by Grassmannian duality because well. What Grassmannian duality does in this context is to just complement uh, the particle labels in the Mandelstams. Now there's important observation, which I don't have time to explain, but uh, it relates the hard limit uh, with something uh, that I show you, this boundary map. So the hard limit with respect to all labels, of course, I'm I can take S123, just take the hard limit. I'm gonna get zero sometimes, or just K equals two Mandelstams sometimes. Uh, so this is gonna give me a collection. Right, so it's going to give me an n-component vector if I take it with respect to all labels, and this operation happens to be exactly the same operation as uh, what what is called the boundary map in terms of uh, uh, courses uh, subdivisions of the hypersimplex. So I, once I go to the boundary of the hypersimplex, the restriction of the subdivision uh, happens to match the, this procedure. But in this procedure, it's purely in, in this case, it's purely kinematical way of of deriving um, this boundary map. Okay, so how about soft theorems? So how soft theorems, the first thing I need to do, so let's, let's take k3 n equals six, for example, uh, I look at the poles that are, that are vanishing. So these ones are all the planar poles, uh, three, six that, that vanish in the soft limit. And then I look how many edges I can construct with this. So I can construct uh, coincidentally five kinds of edges, which are inside the positive tropical gas magnet three, six. These edges are gonna diverge as Tau, one over tau square, where tau is the soft parameter. And I already see combinatorically, just combinatorically, that these soft edges, what they do is they form a tropical Rasmanian, a, a little tropical Rasmanian, which is two five. So they look exactly like a five point uh, by a joint, standard by a joint amplitude. Uh, so this is, this is already int intriguing. So I, I, I don't have an explanation for this, but the point is that uh, I can make this, 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 this little tropical Rasmanian just from the soft, vertices and the soft edges. And if I look at these soft edges in my, in my CHM amplitude, I find that they come in, in, five, in five groups of terms. And each of these groups of terms actually, again, resembles a five point uh, by a joint amplitude, the standard one, right? Except with some different weird poles that happen to appear at k equals three, but the combinatoric is, is exactly the same. So I have some soft, uh, 2,5 tropical gas mining, which is these sub edges, and I have a hard one, which are these uh, groups of terms, of, of five terms. And once I take the, the, the soft limit, I find that all these five groups of terms, they converge to the same thing. So all these guys, they just converge to this hard part, and, and the, soft, the soft part, it just factors. So I get uh, uh, two copies of the, two, of the five point amplitude, one's a soft factor, and, and the other one as a hard uh, amplitude, as a hard five point amplitude. And this is one over tau squared divergence. So this, this, this is a, 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 a generalization of the soft theorem. So if I take my six point amplitude, take tau, tau, tau to zero, I have the soft factor, which is uh, this one, times the five point amplitude. And this happens at k equals three. And, 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 and for k equals two, I know that the soft theorem tells me that uh, the n point amplitude is gonna factor into the n minus one point amplitude times some soft factor. Importantly, because I have two colors, this soft factor is gonna have a plus sign. 
And this is what allows me to interpret this, this subfactor as an actual, uh, again, as a four point amplitude in the standard theory. So this one for k equals three is gonna be a five point amplitude for standard theory. This one is gonna be a four point amplitude for standard theory, uh, via joint theory. And you can tell already what's the pattern. So the pattern is that once I take the soft limit of, of my CGM amplitude, I start deforming my, my edges and, and, uh, and, and my facets. And the, the lean order is t tau to the k minus one. Uh, it goes with the m minus one point amplitude and the soft factor is uh, isomorphic if you want to the uh, k plus two standard standard by the amplitude so this is uh, something that we we proved uh, with, with with diego using the ch representation and the global ratio theorem it can also be seen via push forwards uh, because this this object uh, the soft factor happens to be uh, the canonical form of the abhy as a sahedron so uh, we don't have a, com a geometrical understanding of, of, of this fact so far not even using uh, our collections or generalized payment diagrams, but using CHY is completely, completely transparent and, and, and the proof is, is, just, is just one page. So that means that all the standard, just an interpretation is just all the standard K equals, all the standard uh, K equals two uh, by joint amplitudes, the standard uh, by joint amplitudes, they can be inter interpreted as uh, soft factors for higher K amplitudes. Now, um, as a corollary that I'm not gonna explain much because, um, how am I doing with time? Yeah, you are almost up your time. You should okay, yeah, I, it's just two slides. So the, the first corollary is that we can do it also, we can write the soft theorem for the identity part, or we can do it for the uh, by like two orderings, right? So two different orderings. And I'm not gonna explain exactly how to do it, but you can just look at, at, at the slides. And it, it's indeed a very simple derivation um, using, using this definition. So the soft factor here is gonna be uh, isomorphic to the K minus K plus two, sorry, to the standard K equals two by a joint amplitude, but with different ordinance. So, so this holds for, for different ordinance as well. So it goes, if you want, outside or, or not, it's, it's not only for the positive tropical as many. So um, the last part I want to, to, to mention is uh, a duality that, again, I don't have much time to, to explain, but let me just say that the Grassmannian duality that is also tropicalized here uh, implies some relation with uh, for, for C EGM amplitudes after some relabeling. So if I relabel my Mandel's time invariance this way, taking the complement of the labels, I find that the amplitudes, they, just, they, they are just equal. So as I told you, this exchanges the soft and hard deformations and, and therefore we can also derive a hard theorem. So we just look at this diagram. So we, we take our KN amplitude, we dualize, we take the soft limit, and then we dualize again. And when we take in the soft limit here, we're really taking the hard limit here. So you can see what the hard limit does. So the hard limit is gonna take you from KN to K minus one, A minus one. The soft factor is given by, by this, uh, by the amplitude. Uh, sorry, the hard factor is given by this, the, the soft factor is given by this. And the interesting point is that it's actually uh, K decreasing. So uh, soft uh, limit is gonna be K preserving, hard limit is gonna be K decreasing. This is something we saw already for collections when we were taking uh, collections of K N uh, as, uh, as, as vectors of K minus one and minus one. And this hints a, a, a beautiful connection with uh, uh, different results that have, have appeared for in terms of the hypersimplex. So we know in, in terms of the hypersimplex, this boundary map uh, taken from, for, for, for from Kn to K minus one, N minus one. It, ha it has also appeared in some uh, recursion relations derived by, by Lauren and Tomac and um, Mateo. So uh, this just leaves me with two questions for the future. So the first one, uh, just a follow up on Frey's question, uh, is what can we learn from this generalized Feynman diagram? So they provide a notion of locality or some generalization of locality in terms of distances, in terms of Schunger parameters. So is there a notion of quantum theory actually that determines uh, this compatible collection? So is, is, it, uh, is there a way of just getting this, this by constructing, by a constructed procedure instead of just bootstrapping them from combinatorics? Um, is there a notion of, of quantum mechanics of world length, uh, of, 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 of world length parameterization for, this, for these objects? And the second question is, if we can bootstrap the amplitude uh, using this soft hard factorizations, what do they mean? Or how can we derive it from, from, from geometry? Um, I should say that we also have control over the sublinear order. So this is 
uh, intriguing at least because there is no gauge invariance, but we have control over the subling order of this of these objects uh, using the CHY formula again. So very similar to what uh, Afghani Jedi and, and Bolovich and Trapp uh, had had done for K plus two. We can we can keep going in that direction. Uh, we don't know what this subling sub theorem means. And um, in a sense, one answer to this question is our our combinatorial bootstrap, which is using this hard hard uh, limit. Uh, to bootstrap uh, the facets of the tropical gas magnet, starting from from a lower one. So yeah, this is all I wanted to say. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alfredo, for a nice talk. So 